All right. Hello, Todd Harris, and uh, thank you very much for doing this interview with me. You're very welcome. It's good to be here. All right. So um, I want to focus on sort of the behind-the-scenes aspect of Global Agenda and the team. So my first question would be, what was the original idea or vision um, behind Global Agenda that led to its development? Cool. Good question. Um, you know, some games start with a piece of concept art or with a really compelling story or IP. And, and for us, it was really more about um, the mechanics and the gameplay that we wanted. So Global Agenda was built by uh, Hi Res Studios, and uh, we were founded by uh, an entrepreneur who wanted to build his own MMO. And uh, he and the original team had a pretty specific idea of the gameplay we wanted, which was the action of a shooter, the persistence and progression of an MMO, and then uh, an end game that was very player driven and had a strategy element. So, really, those were the three big gameplay principles that we wanted. And we started with those from a vision standpoint, and then wrapped everything, um, including the setting, the art style, the fiction, all of that really was driven around what would support those three things, fast action gameplay, persistence, and a player-driven endgame. So that was the vision. Oh, very interesting. Um, how big was the actual team at the start of the game, and in comparison, how big is it now? It started about being five people, I would say. It was a small set of programmers, actually, um, was the very uh, first set of folks, and, and not even really game experience programmers, but the, uh, programmers that we had all worked together, and um, they were just really sharp rock star programmers, and uh, most of them big gamers, but hadn't necessarily worked on a game project before. And uh, and then Erez, um, who was doing the lead design role, and myself uh, kind of playing the producer role, and in those days uh, active with some of the story and setting as well. And then once we kind of got the core idea worked out and um, chose a development engine. We went with Unreal 3 and kind of got the gears in motion. We started hiring pretty aggressively and, and added one to two people a month until we got to about 40 people in size. And right now we're uh, about 45 people in size. So um, obviously added to the programming team artists and level designers and animators and uh, general designers and uh, UI folks and the whole suite. So 45 people right now. So essentially it's the uh, small on launch and big now, which is pretty much the reverse of every other MMO out there. Yeah, well, we're small on, on initial idea and medium size while we iterated on the idea. And then, yeah, has grown a bit since launch because uh, we've been fortunate to have the community grow since launch, which is always a good thing in the world of MMOs and, and not too common these days. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, so you've explained the, the idea that led to Global Agenda. Um, what, what do you, you guys uh, feel about how Global Agenda has turned out now compar compared to that vision or idea? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely pleased. It's Again, we've got... Um, Almost all of our of the core team is still in place and was in place to work on our first big expansion, which uh, came out just over the summer's uh, multiple phases, as you know, and and resulted in Sandstorm. and And Sandstorm was really a result of working a lot with the community on what sort of things they wanted to see post launch, and that's probably what we're most pleased about. We always had the vision that we wanted to release with really fun, balanced gameplay. And then add more meat on a you know on a really good skeleton post launch and work with the community to figure out what that was and and that really resulted in sandstorm so we're real pleased that um, we were able to do that that we could keep the the core staff on to do that and that the communities responded well to the sandstorm expansion. All right. Um, so. One of the things that I love about independent gaming is essentially the uh, the freedom to develop the game your way. Do you feel that Global Agenda would have been the same or the same level of, of success if it was actually tied to a big name publisher? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I, I don't think so. Um, probably, you know, especially because it was our first title and it and it was an ambitious title as far as uh, you know an independent game studio making an MMO and an MMO that blends these different genres together. So I think. With a big publisher, there definitely would have been more pressure to move a larger number of units initially, you know, at launch. 
and um, and probably would have involved a retail launch up front, which was really not our strategy. Our strategy was to start a little smaller with a with a hardcore fan base that almost had to discover us, and then really to grow the game organically. So we probably would have moved more units, you know, in month one with a big publisher, but uh, it's not at all clear that we would be as successful as we are today. And, and I mean, really, to us, success, you know, it's kind of how you define it. For us, there's, there's probably three things, you know, for number one, what, what are the user reviews? You know, when we, when we ask people in the community, which we survey folks a lot, you know, would you refer this game to a friend? That's our ultimate litmus test, and we're pleased that those numbers are high and they keep just getting higher. So that, that's success. And number two is the community growing, which we touched on before, and, and we're definitely growing. And um, so that's success. And then number three, as an independent, are we making any impact on the industry itself? And we think we are, um, because from a design standpoint, we've helped uh, create or at least continue this category of shooter MMO. And then as far as just that indie developer culture, um, even though we're fairly big as far as staff compared to some other indie developers, we really think, you know, we try to foster a culture of really working with the community and not just fire and forget the game and move on to the next Project. So um, on all those elements, I think being independent has really helped us and, and allowed us to succeed. Okay, very good. Uh, so one thing that's got some people confused, or maybe it's just me, <laughs> uh, this Guild Wars expansion model that you're, off, that you're talking about, um, would this be... Would each game be uh, standalone? Would each expansion be standalone, like in Guild Wars, or would it just be an add-on with the current Sandstorm being the necessary base for these add-ons? Um, the current Global Agenda and our first free expansion, Sandstorm, would be a base for future add-ons. So our strategy is to do you know, multiple of these expansions that introduce new game types and new content, new player rewards and devices and that sort of thing. But they would all be basically extending the original um, global agenda model, and I think you know Guild Wars. I think had some that were that were add-ons, and and then their franchise was going long enough that they would sometimes bundle the original with some of the expansions and allow that that bundled package for sale. And uh, hopefully, will be successful enough to have a long life and and look at that as well. But each expansion basically would build um, upon the base. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so, can we expect to see the Commonwealth Prime open zone in the next add-on, which will be including uh, the battle zones? Um, top secret. Uh, we <laughs> are. I will acknowledge that. Yeah, war zones are definitely in scope for the next expansion. So, war zones are us, you know, doing some work on the on the server and client tech and and gameplay as well to increase the number of players within a single map. And so uh, that type of new gameplay is in scope for the next expansion, but we haven't actually settled on Commonwealth Prime as a definite location. That's a possibility, but there's a few other interesting locations that uh, we've been doing some concept art around. So it's just as likely that um, it'll be outside of Commonwealth Prime as inside. Okay. Well, it was worth asking anyway. Sure. So, um, are there any plans to entice more players into getting involved in the AVA, or Alliance versus Alliance, and in making it easier for the smaller agencies to get involved and be competitive? Yeah, we're continued, uh, continually trying to move the game in that direction, and I think this last season actually has, has just wrapped up. We just wrapped up a, a really good, um, compelling, you know, down to the end, last hour, last minutes season for both the weekend zone and the weekday zone. And actually, uh, a number of changes have made it more accessible. The, the fact that these seasons are only two weeks in duration, I think, lets more players commit, and our shifting of the schedules to a weekday schedule and a weekend schedule across the multiple time zones means that from a scheduling perspective, more people have been able to participate. And that's really been one of our the hardest challenges. Almost everyone really likes the AVA game when they get into it because you're playing pre-made teams, but it's just been the logistics and kind of the amount of commitment. And so this last season, I think, has worked 
better than than any of our previous iterations. I think we had uh, close to 15% of the population participate. We want that to go even higher, but it's definitely getting to the point where it you know feels like a, a viable um, end game for the majority uh, or for you know uh, for global agenda. So we're going to keep working on mainly the reward side of AVA to uh, to make sure that. You know, we can have as many players as possible participate, and I and I think this coming season we'll we'll see the numbers go up quite a bit. Great, great. So, um, just a fun question now: What class do you personally find the most fun, and why? I try to play them all. I must acknowledge I do play medic the most. Um, maybe that's because it you know is the, the obviously the most support class and, and good for helping other players in the game. But I also just it's a very it's a very active role in global agenda you know you're almost always the target of fire so you're having to uh hop around and and uh, be jetpacking and and hopping around constantly trying to get away from the melee cons or the sniper cons and at the same time as you know it's really an active way um to heal others with heal grenades and other things so i i just find it a uh, a really fun class to play but i i try to give the other classes equal time as well huh, don't i know that uh primary target thing <laughs> <laughs> You're familiar with that? Uh, very well. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much all I wanted to ask. Is there anything you'd like to say to uh, the viewers regarding Global Agenda? No, I uh, appreciate the coverage on your site, and uh, I think it's I think it's cool that you are highlighting the independent game folks, and and indies are defined a lot of ways. You know, some some people think if you don't if you use 3D or if it's not a casual download or if your budget is too big, you you can't be indie. And we've definitely tried to. Uh, be indie in spirit in in that you know we uh, we had a pretty unique vision at the beginning and and tried to stay close with the community to uh, make the game as good as possible so appreciate the opportunity to tell folks about global agenda and um, uh, make sure to highlight to people that there is a free trial so uh, we're always looking to grow the community so people can download it from our site uh, or steam or other sites and uh, check it out for themselves and and see if they find something that they like all right. Well, thank you very much then. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it.